The recipe for the original cheesecake from the Cheesecake Factory is something very controversial because this recipe, it's so secret that they don't even allow the people who work at the restaurant to know the exact recipe of this cheesecake. They make it in a separate location where they make the cheesecakes and then send them to the restaurant. This is supposed to be as close as we'll possibly ever get. The first step is to fill up a pan with half an inch of water. So I'm used to the metric system. It's a little bit more than this. So this is exactly half an inch of water. We're going to preheat the oven to 475 Fahrenheit and just keep the water in the oven until it's ready. We're going to start with making the crust for the cheesecake. So the main ingredient is actually graham crackers. It's basically the main ingredient on the crust. So you want to put the graham crackers in the food processor. I don't know if this is gonna fit. We might have to do this in two rounds. You can also buy this as crumbs already. I don't have that kind of luxury. It was really difficult to find actual graham crackers as it was. I'm gonna blend this just for a second because this is very very full and I don't really have space. So we got a little bit more space. I'm just gonna put the rest in here. So we're gonna blend the graham crackers now. It's usually best to do this slowly and in stages because we don't want this to become like a paste. Icing sugar consistency, we want this to be like a little bit grainy. I'm happy with this. To this we're gonna add some melted butter and cinnamon. And we're going to basically blend this again. It looks really good. I think it looks actually kind of similar to the Cheesecake Factory crust, I think. So when you're done, it will look like this. Obviously, we're gonna mix this a little bit better. We're gonna transfer this. Oops. We're gonna transfer this to a cheesecake pan. We're gonna make sure to get every little bit because if it's really gonna taste like the Cheesecake Factory one, we want every powder of this cheesecake to not go to waste. We actually did a really good job of blending this, but obviously if this is a little bit chunky, you can always kind of use your hands to break any large pieces. We're gonna press this down to basically make a crust. And on the actual edges, like on the sides of the pan, you wanna leave it two thirds of the way up. I'm good at following recipes like it's a science project. It smells really, really good. It kind of smells like your grandma's making the best cookies ever. So far, this is not very difficult, but I can't move this too much because this will... I don't want a landslide to happen, but I don't think it needs to be too perfect, but we've kind of done an okay job, actually. For the next step, you want to grab quite a large amount of aluminum paper. Al aluminum? So you want to place the pan on top of the foil paper. Sorry, this is really loud, but you kind of want to go around it. That wasn't too difficult, I promise. So you kind of want to go around it until it kind of covers just the bottom. Not too much, not all the way up. We're going to put this in the freezer while we work on the actual filling for the cheesecake. To make the filling, I'm gonna start by blending the eggs because for some reason they have to be mixed before adding it to the filling. So, well, life hack, we're just gonna whisk it with one whisk. So, I cannot believe this is actually working. I am a genius. So the eggs are fully whisked and combined. And also I might use this hack for scrambled eggs from now on. We're gonna set the eggs aside and we're gonna work with the cream cheese and like the main part of the filling. This is a whole lot of cream cheese. I mean, you guys already know this, but I say it every time. The measurements for these recipes are in the description. You will find everything that you could potentially want in the description of this video. To this, we're gonna add the sour cream. I don't know why I thought it was gonna taste like whipped cream. Mistakes were made, lessons were learned. And we're gonna add the sugar as well. Yes, it's it's a lot of sugar. Like let's not let's not sugarcoat it, no pun intended. And the last thing we need is some vanilla extract. I'm gonna grab the other whisk. So we wanna mix the cream cheese and the sugar before adding the eggs, and we wanna make sure this is really well blended. when one of your arms is giving up <laughs> and switch. So now that this is smooth and creamy, we can finally add the eggs. So you wanna add just, okay, that was one unblended yolk, but it'll be fine. According to the recipe, you do not wanna overmix this. This is really important 
for texture. This egg yolk is really stubborn. Is that egg white? Oh. So I just got the crust out of the freezer and now it's very, very solid. Can't really mess it up anymore, which is somehow comforting. So while this is still frozen, we're gonna pour the filling. I'm just gonna do the whole thing. Damn, that's a whole lot of cheesecake. Truly a cheesecake factory portion. I guess it does smell like Cheesecake Factory, kind of weirdly. Nobody asks for the sensory information or my videos, but I give it to you anyways. I'll tell you the smell, the color. Well, maybe not the color. So we're gonna smooth this out, I think. It's definitely a different consistency for cheesecake. It's a lot smoother. There's a chunk here of cream cheese that wasn't blended. Not on my watch. Now on to a very dangerous step. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to this. So straight from the oven, this is our, I think you call this a water bath. It's basically just boiling hot water. So we're gonna get the cheesecake and we're gonna put it in the water bath. Oh my God, I'm gonna burn myself. I already know, wait, this is a bad idea. Oh my God, I'm so scared. I'm gonna... Oh man, I hope there's no water coming to the cheesecake. I just made a mess, but somehow it still worked. I have to move quick, but basically this will cook for 12 minutes at the current temperature, which is 450 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you switch the temperature to 350 and you cook it for an extra 50 to 60 minutes. That was top three of scariest moments I've ever lived through. While the cheesecake is baking, I would call this the secret ingredient for the Cheesecake Factory cheesecake. In my opinion, this is what makes it addictive. I'm gonna use some sour cream. And to the sour cream, we're gonna add some sugar. And this, it basically creates like a topping, like this will be the topping of the cheesecake. So we only apply this after the cheesecake has come out of the oven. I honestly think this is what makes the cheesecake so addictive. It's the balance of the sweetness in the cheesecake with the sour on top. So we're gonna spread this as soon as we get it out of the oven. So here we've got our cheesecake that now as it's cooked and it's fully cooled down. I wanna show it to you, but I don't wanna ruin it. But as you can see, it cracked on top, but it actually still looks very flat despite the fact that it cracked. It might be, like I can see how this will look like the Cheesecake Factory one. So we're gonna get the, the Cheesecake Factory secret ingredient, which is the sour cream topping. I wanted to be more elegant about this. And we're gonna spread this on top. The good thing is, if it cracks the cheesecake, you won't even be able to see it because it'll be covered with this. It's a little bit of a shame, the fact that we're hiding like the nice golden color. It's strangely flat. Whenever I make a cheesecake, it never comes out this flat, usually kind of like dips in the center. This one is very, very flat. It's almost like... We're gonna put this in the fridge for a minimum of four hours. And apparently this is important. The longer this stays in the fridge for, the smoother the texture will be like the Cheesecake Factory one. Ideally, just eat your cheesecake the next day. While the cheesecake is resting in the fridge, we're going to move on to making that strawberry sauce that is very much the signature of Cheesecake Factory on top of the cheesecake. To make the strawberry sauce, you wanna start with strawberries and I sort of just remove the green bit. So here we've got some warm water and we're gonna add some corn starch to it. This is basically to prevent it from being lumpy. So you're gonna mix this and because the water is warm, this will be smooth instantly. It should still look very liquidy it will thicken up once we cook it. So we can start by adding the mixture that we made. We're gonna add sugar, lemon juice. This is basically the sticky glaze part. And then obviously we're also gonna add the strawberries. We're adding everything at once. Oh, just accidentally glazed my jumper. I'm gonna coat the strawberries, but also I don't want, I'm gonna wanna break them and damage them. So we're just gonna cook everything the way it is here. And hopefully the sauce will start to thicken up. Because of all the sugar, the strawberries instantly go super, super shiny. It looks like those Korean candies, the crunchy ones when you bite into it. The mixture is like bubbling up. Super syrupy. It's pancake syrup consistency right now. I think we wanna take it just a tiny little bit further. This looks incredible. I have never seen anything more beautiful than this. I have to like risk everything and show it to you guys. Oh my God, that sauce, this syrup, the bubbles. It's like a jam with like actual pieces of strawberry. I mean, this is literally the best thing ever. I am going to gently place each strawberry in there. 
I just want one or two good ones for presentation. This looks insane. Like, it looks so good. How good do these look? They look like professional presentation strawberries. I mean, they are. And now I'm gonna get all the syrup, all the sauce out. It is quite a good consistency, but I do think it will still thicken up a little bit more because we're gonna put these in the fridge for like a little bit until this fully cools down. It looks good. It really does look good. Like it's obviously probably a lot smaller than the ones at the Cheesecake Factory, but I really hope this comes out. It's kind of stuck a little bit. The recipe didn't say anything about buttering the sides. Um, so we had a bit of an accident on this side. I mean, are you kidding me? The colors of it, it looks pretty similar to a Cheesecake Factory cheesecake, except that it kind of stuck <laughs> a little bit. I'm gonna get a real Cheesecake Factory portion size slice. This is only with four hours in the fridge. I mean, <laughs> this looks like a slice of the Cheesecake Factory cheesecake. Look at the colors on the side. That's literally the colors of the Cheesecake Factory decoration. And here we've got this syrup that we made. Oh, it is beautiful. I'm gonna try to plate this exactly like they do at the Cheesecake Factory, which is going to be difficult, but I'm gonna try my best. First of all, strawberry on top. This is like the most important. I mean, this literally looks straight out of the Cheesecake Factory. And then I'm gonna do another strawberry on here because sometimes they do that in the decoration. Okay, then a little bit of whipped cream. Tell me if you guys saw this, you wouldn't think this came from the Cheesecake Factory. Like, it's pretty damn impressive visually. We haven't tasted it yet. Now that we've got the visuals, we can just make this super yummy. You will never have to go to the Cheesecake Factory again. Imagine making this for your family members at like Christmas or something. They will have to pay you for this. It's perfect. The only thing I would have changed if I did this again is I would have left this in the fridge overnight because the crust wasn't fully set. So four hours is cutting it too short. So, oh my God, I want to get a bite of the whole thing. I think I've said this before, but that's because I never tasted this. This is the closest. This tastes more like the Cheesecake Factory cheesecake than the Cheesecake Factory cheesecake. The sourness, the balance, the creaminess, the strawberries on top, the amount of sugar, it's exactly the same. This is the same cheesecake. This is insane and I'm going to jail. On the previous video, we went through that PDF with all the leaked copycat recipes for Panda Express and the orange chicken was incredible. And I was overwhelmed with the amount of people requesting for the walnut shrimp recipe. First thing we're gonna do is prepare the walnuts and they're basically, I don't wanna say candied. You wanna switch on the temperature first. You wanna add the sugar. I didn't say it was healthy. Water. We're gonna dissolve this a little bit, but honestly, I don't even think it matters. And to this, we're gonna add the walnuts. And now we're supposed to gently boil this for two to three minutes. So we're gonna switch on the temperature and once it reaches a boil, two to three minutes. Let's see how quickly we can get to a boil. It's like walnut soup. So we're getting really close to a boil, but this is a little bit too hot, I think. So we're gonna set up a timer for two to three minutes. And I don't know, is this supposed to reduce? We'll find out. I think we have... They're not really candified. They are boiled, I think. I know you guys like to get the visual, so let me try to, like, show you without spilling boiling hot sugar on my legs. That's kind of what the walnuts look like once you finish cooking them for two or three minutes. And what we want to do is basically transfer them somewhere where they can basically dry. And you don't want the liquid, you just want the actual walnuts. And that is basically all the walnuts. It should look something like this. And we're just gonna set these aside now. So we're gonna move on to making the batter. The batter for the walnut shrimp is supposed to be a lot lighter than the orange chicken one, for example. They accomplish that by using only egg whites. So we're gonna start by whipping some egg whites.
This is nice and like, as you can see, the egg whites are fully whipped. To the whipped egg whites, you wanna add some cornstarch. I don't think we're supposed to overly mix this, so I'm gonna be really gentle. It's like marshmallow mixture. You probably can't see anything because everything's white. It's a marshmallow texture. I'm just gonna add the rest. Ugh. It's really hard to mix this without overly mixing because it, it is a little bit lumpy. Very, very interesting texture for batter. I've never really seen a batter like this. This is one of the most interesting textures. So when you're done, hopefully you get something like this. It is honestly a fascinating texture. I feel like this is gonna create an amazing batter. I've got shrimp that's been already peeled, you know, prepared for cooking. So I'm gonna try to add just the shrimp Oh, not the paper. I don't want to add too much of the water because I don't want to ruin the consistency of our batter. Why does shrimp come with paper? I'm not questioning the process, but it does not look appetizing. So I'm gonna make a little bit more because the orange chicken, I ate the whole thing and I wish I would have made double. I think this is gonna be very satisfying. Oh, can't even see the shrimp anymore. So we're waiting for the vegetable oil to get to 350 Fahrenheit. And meanwhile, the shrimp have been sitting on this and look what happened, it's like perfectly coated. And I find that the best way to grab them is actually with chopsticks. So that's exactly how I'm gonna do it. Normally I would get the basket out, fill it up with a shrimp and then put it back on. The best way to do this is to grab each shrimp individually and place it. It will be quick, cause there's not that many. Once you drop it, the shrimp is supposed to cook for four to five minutes. If there's too much batter, you can just get it out. But this one is actually perfect. Some of them are floating, some are not floating. Oh. So I guess we're doing it in batches. Yay. Putting the lid back on. I was getting really brave for a second. I am not employed by Panda Express. I don't have insurance. Okay, so these are officially ready. They have little pockets. I'm scared they're gonna explode. That actually looks Perfect. That is the perfect color. This is exactly what we're looking for. Just a little bit of a golden, like just a little bit of color. So I'm gonna transfer them to the paper towel. It's really light. It's almost like a tempura kind of texture, which I think is exactly what this should be. This shrimp turned out so, so good. Like this is so insanely crispy that I need to give you the ASMR because you won't believe me. So we're going to prepare the sauce now. We're starting with mayo. To the mayo, we're gonna add MSG, honey, which was what I expected for this sauce. And now a controversial ingredient. This is sweetened condensed milk. It does make sense when I think of it, when I think of the flavor profile of the walnut shrimp. I can see it. I think that's what it tastes like. And this is basically our sauce. Oh my god, the color is so, so nice. Like a milky, creamy beige. But to the sauce, we're going to add our shrimp. That is how we make our walnut shrimp. All of that goes in. This makes about enough for like four people. This is gonna be the best part. Oh. I have truly never seen anything more beautiful than this. That is exactly... Do you see how shiny it is? It almost looks like caramel popcorn. It looks so, so good. And we haven't even added the walnuts yet. Like the coating, even though it was so light, it doesn't actually fall apart. Honestly, I just hope it tastes good. These are the walnuts from earlier. So they're kind of like candied. They're not crunchy, crunchy, but I don't think they're crunchy on the actual dish. So this makes sense. Wow, how beautiful does that look? That actually looks insane. Some pieces of walnuts are a little bit smaller, others are a bit big, but I actually think that adds to the visuals. I'm gonna mix this in a little bit because I do want, this sauce looks so good that I want the walnuts to be covered in the same sauce. I hope you guys are seeing what I'm seeing, which is restaurant quality walnut shrimp. I think it will taste the same, if not similar to Panda Express. It looks like it. It smells like it. This is like a portion for like 12 people. So you can top it up with more walnuts if you want. If you like sticky, saucy food, there is nothing better than this. I do think it does look very similar to the Panda Express one, but obviously you guys will let me know. To me, I would not be able to tell the difference. Okay, I want to get a bite of the walnut and shrimp, everything together. Oh my God, this is so good. I've never made anything fried better than this. This is like... If I came to your house and you served me this, 
I would have a bite of it and I would say, okay, which Panda Express did you go to? It's restaurant quality. It's specifically the Panda Express dish. It's so, so good. No words, truly. Do you hear the crunchy? The recipe for the Cinnabon cinnamon buns is one of the biggest mysteries of like the food industry because think about it, this whole chain basically sells one product. I mean, they do sell other things, but we all go there for the classic cinnamon bun. Allegedly, this is very, very close to being able to create the Cinnabon in your house. This is milk warmed up to exactly 100 degrees Fahrenheit. To this, we're gonna add instant yeast and white sugar. I should probably be doing this in a bigger glass because this is going to expand, but it's probably gonna be fine. We're supposed to let this sit for 10 minutes and you will see this will be very foamy on top. I hope this glass is tall enough. If it isn't, I'm gonna just change it to a different one. We'll see what will happen. It's been a little bit longer than 10 minutes and as you can see, this is exactly what we're looking for. So we can move on to preparing the dough for the cinnamon buns. I'm gonna start by adding some bread flour. It's a lot, but it's basically the main ingredient. To this, I'm gonna add sugar and salt. I don't know why my hands are black. I think it's something. That's how often I use my KitchenAid. I think that's fine. Oh, no, that's not fine. And we're gonna mix this just a little bit. To this, I'm gonna add the melted margarine. It's really important that it's margarine and not butter. One egg, two eggs. And we're gonna combine this a little bit. And finally, we're gonna add the mixture that we prepared, which is all that yeasty goodness. Everything's a little bit messy now, but it'll be fine. Okay, I'm gonna get this all out of here. As you can see, it's more or less mixed, but as you can see, this is very, very elastic. So we could get the mixture out and we could knead it with our hands for like 10, 15 minutes until it's smooth and elastic. But if you've got one of these, like a kneading attachment, you can use that instead, which is what I'm gonna be doing. So with the kneading attachment, we are basically going to knead this until it's smooth. I'm gonna say five to 10 minutes, maybe. So this is kind of what the dough looks like. I mean, it's pretty elastic, smooth. You will know when to stop because it just becomes more uniform. I'm gonna make sure nothing weird is stuck to the sides. I'm using a wet towel. This is basically like a kitchen cloth. It's just a little bit wet and I'm gonna cover the dough. I mean, we are recreating something that they do in a factory, but I'm trusting that this will work. You wanna find a warm place in your house. So if you live in a warm country, this will be easier. For me, I'm gonna put it inside the oven. My oven is like switched off, but it's just, I guess it's warmer in there. So you're gonna put this somewhere warm for like an hour. For the filling for the cinnamon buns, we're going to start with some brown sugar and a whole lot of cinnamon like a lot. And we're just gonna combine this and we're actually not combining the butter, we're adding the butter separately. It kinda looks like this, it's just sugar and cinnamon. You guys are not ready for this. This has doubled, I would even say tripled in size. This is a very good recipe. I've never, I've never before been able to get this much rice for cinnamon buns. This looks like professional dough. Like straight out of like a professional bakery. So we're gonna flour this surface and I need to get a tape measure because this needs to be... <gasps> this just ruined my day. No cinnamon bun will ever make this worth it. It's floured the surface. It's a little too floured. This is possibly going to be the most satisfying moment of my life. This is like some professional quality dough. We're in a bit of a sticky situation. Wow, this is very, very sticky. It turns out we might need all that flour. It is a great dough, I will say. Like this is, this is very, very good stuff. We're supposed to roll this out into a rectangle that is 16 by 21 inches. So this is 16. We're just gonna roll out the dough. There's no other way to do this. This is not my first time making cinnamon buns. It's the first time where I feel like this is like a professional mm -hmm. recipe. The other ones were basically one minute microwave bun in comparison. Ugh, it's sticking. This is 16 inches and this 
is 22. That will do. For the next step, which is the filling, you're gonna need some softened butter. So once you've got it rolled out, you're going to need butter. And you're just going to spread the butter on top of this. So the back of a spoon seems to be the perfect way to do this because it's a little bit smoother, so you can spread it a little bit better. So I'm gonna try to spread this as much as I can. And as you probably guessed, on top of this, we're going to spread our brown sugar cinnamon mixture. This one is a little bit easier to spread evenly than the butter. So this makes around 12, I think. I'm only cooking nine because I don't have space to cook 12. It also looks like someone stepped on a tiramisu. So in the bottom, you're kind of left with just a whole lot of cinnamon. So this is the short end. You guys can't really see this is so big. that like, this is taking over my whole table. So I'm gonna try to roll this that way, or should we roll it this way? So far, it's not sticking. It's coming out perfectly. I don't want to jinx it. The ends are going to be much bigger, but we we'll probably we'll sort it out. So that is basically it. I'm not sure if this is okay. It ripped in one area, but that's fine. Truly, truly speechless here. I have never made anything like this successfully. I don't know how we've done this, but we did. So we're supposed to divide this into twelve. So the best way is to start with the center. Oh my God, these are gonna look... This is gonna be so good. It's quite difficult to cut these once they become smaller, but I think we've done it. Okay, I'm gonna grab one to show you guys. This looks pretty good. I don't wanna like touch it too much. It kind of already starts to remind me of the cinnamon buns. I hope someone can see it as well. Do you guys see the vision? Like a specific cinnabon. So when you're done, you should end up with basically 12. Because I kind of ruined my ends, like this one is basically like, it's got nothing inside. It's a sad croissant. I'm actually gonna make nine and this is perfect because I'm using a square pen instead of a rectangle one. And we're going to place the cinnamon buns on here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's how many I'm making. I'm trying to pick the best ones, but I don't really have many options here. I know a trick, which is the end should be facing another cinnamon bun so they don't open and look ugly. Okay, so that concludes our nine cinnamon buns. I mean, I'm pretty happy with this. They obviously look a little bit small for this pen. So we're gonna cover them and let them rest once again for 30 minutes. This is really important because we really want them to take a little bit more space. It's been 30 minutes and the rolls have doubled in size and they look incredible. Keep in mind these are still not cooked and they look like cinnamon buns. I'm not even good at baking, so I don't even know how this is all working out. I know it was a lot of waiting for the dough to rise, but the baking time is actually only 15 minutes. I'm gonna put this in the oven for 15 minutes at 400 Fahrenheit. So we just got these out of the oven. The camera is not even doing justice to how beautiful these are. They look a lot darker on camera. They look incredible. I don't know if they look exactly like Cinnabon ones because usually the Cinnabon are cut into squares. So maybe once we cut it, we'll actually see what they look like because they're not like the cleanest and most similar in size, but they smell beautiful. They look beautiful. And I think this one here is gonna look just like a Cinnabon one. So we're gonna make the frosting so we can still apply it while it's still warm because I want it to kind of melt. So we're gonna start with some icing sugar, cream cheese, butter, and vanilla extract. And this is basically how the frosting is supposed to be made. It's a lot of sugar, I'm not gonna lie, but it's not like I expected anything else. Okay, it's coming together. Okay, so the icing is actually, it kind of reminds me of frosting, not so much of icing, it's a little bit on the thick side. I think it's because once we apply it, it's gonna melt a little bit. I think in order to be exactly the same, it would have needed a little bit of food coloring to make this white, because it's a little bit on the yellow side from the butter. The more you beat it, basically, the lighter it becomes, but also the better the consistency becomes. It looks like you bought it. It doesn't even look homemade anymore. That's the interesting thing about these recipes. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. There is nothing more satisfying in this life. Yes, they look the same. I see it now. I don't really know the best way to apply these. It doesn't look incredible yet. Once it starts to melt a little bit and to mix, I'm gonna wait a little bit before I dive into it and get like a, a slice. 
if you will, because I want this to soak in and I know it will look a lot better because right now it looks a little bit like so the icing has melted a little bit. I mean, it looks good. I still can't tell if this is gonna look like a Cinnabon once we cut it because usually you only see one. So which one of these is gonna look more like a Cinnabon? Okay, I'm gonna go for this one in the corner. Oh, it's so soft. Oh my God, immediately looks like a Cinnabon. Ooh, that crusty sugar in the corner, it's like caramelized and then pillowy soft. Oh. Look at that bready deliciousness. We kind of ruined this one on the side. <sighs> but look at the texture on this. Maybe the biggest one would have been the better one because I can see it, but it's definitely a little bit smaller. I'm gonna plate it anyways. I swear, I didn't even pick the best looking one. Oh my God, it's like bread. It's so soft, just like the Cinnabon ones. Oh my God. Wow. I cannot explain how much this tastes like a Cinnabon. It's got that soft, like it's basically like bread. Mine look a little bit more messy. But flavor-wise, this is exactly the same as a Cinnabon. Apart from the cheesecake, there is one dish that the Cheesecake Factory is very secretive about because this is their best-selling dish. The Cheesecake Factory official mac and cheese. Trust me, I've had it and I've never been able to forget. I need this to work more than any recipe that I've ever tried, ever. The first thing we're gonna do and before we forget is basically coat... Uh, did I just spray the camera? And you want to preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. The most important thing in the Cheesecake Factory mac and cheese is the combination of cheeses. This is what gives it the classic flavor that you're expecting. Honestly, I can't even remember exactly what cheeses this is. We've got cheddar, American cheese, Gouda, Gouda, and Monterey Jack, I think. I honestly, don't quote me on this. Like I said, the ingredients are always in the description down below, but this is the exact combination that the Cheesecake Factory uses for their mac and cheese. And you kinda wanna mix this and you'll understand why in a second. Some of mine came in a block and I had to shred it myself. So I'm gonna mix all the cheeses. Okay, this actually looks really good. I would eat this with a spoon. Next up, you wanna cook and basically drain your noodles and they use these, the Elbow Classic mac and cheese noodles. And yes, this is a crazy amount, but it's, the Cheesecake Factory after all. If you go to the Cheesecake Factory and you don't have food for the next four days, then you probably went to Olive Garden. So this is how to make the base for the cheese sauce that's going to coat all the noodles. So we're gonna switch on the temperature. First off, you wanna melt some butter. I'm doing this in a very small saucepan. You probably wanna do this in something big, but I obviously want you guys to see what is going on. Okay, so my butter is basically melted. You can't even see it anymore. They're just one tiny little bit here. So when the butter is melted, you wanna add some flour. So you wanna combine the flour with the butter until this goes almost like brown. We want like a toasty color to the mixture of flour and butter. And also preferably no lumps. So this is kind of what the mixture should look like. Oh, I don't know what is going on here, but I think I don't want to undercook this because there's nothing worse than mac and cheese that tastes like raw flour. I refuse, I have never made that mistake and I never intend on making it. It's getting a little bit deep and we don't want to burn it. To this you want to add half and half, which is half milk, half cream. It's a very American ingredient. So this is some half and half. And by some I mean a lot. It's a very smooth mixture, so we've done the flour part correctly. Not a single lump in sight, as you can see. Also me when I go for a health scan. You want to cook this until this starts to thicken up. And this is really important. You don't want this to be too liquidy. I don't know what it is about these copycat recipes, but they just actually look like restaurant quality, always. Like this does not look like if you Google a random recipe. It will not look like this. Okay, something tells me this is ready because it is a really good consistency. I'm really gonna try to do this without spilling, but like, this is an incredible, creamy, smooth. Now that the temperature is off, we're going to add some salt, paprika, and black pepper. 
and you're supposed to add this once once it stopped cooking you're gonna mix the spices in okay this gives it a little bit of a color please tell me this isn't the richest smoothest base you've ever seen for a mac and cheese without even the cheese this is gonna be very good now you want to grab your cheese mixture and we're going to add three quarters of this which for me it will be difficult because my pan is very small so i'm gonna leave all of this and then we're gonna use this in a second and you want to mix this into the sauce and keep in mind the temperature is off it's very very thick but it is getting there this is the cheesiest sauce I have ever seen and smelled. It is incredible. Would you look at this? Isn't this insane? <laughs> now that is why it tastes so good. So now I'm gonna grab the cooked noodles and I'm gonna hope that there's space for all of this in here. This is gonna be the most satisfying moment of my life. Oh, oh my God. This is so cheesy. It's so cheesy, it doesn't even stick <laughs> to the pan. Truly the cheesiest mac and cheese I have ever seen. Keep in mind that we're making a whole lot of pasta, so there is obviously a whole lot of cheese in here. This looks incredible, but also it sticks to everything. Like, it's a lot. So when you're done mixing, we're gonna transfer this into our baking tray. Oh my god. Wow, this is a real... Cheesecake Factory portion. This is literally packed in here. There's no space for no, nothing else. This looks so insane that it should be illegal. So now we're gonna add the remaining of the cheese that we saved. And as if this wasn't enough, we're still adding some more cheesiness on top. But I think this is mostly for decoration. Wow, it does smell incredible. <sighs> if you thought this was it, no, we still got something else to add to this. Let me introduce you guys to the Cheesecake Factory mac and cheese secret, which is melted butter and breadcrumbs. So you want to mix this all together. So instead of just topping it with breadcrumbs, you almost want to make a breadcrumb mixture paste. It makes the breadcrumbs kind of like golden. Looks good. Looks very good. And you want to sprinkle this on top of the mac and cheese. Do you guys see how beautiful this is? This is truly like have you heard about 50 shades of gray let me introduce you to 50 shades of yellow and i don't know which one should be 18 plus this is by far one of the richest mac and cheese recipes i've ever made ever it's literally everything that the cheesecake factory stands for this looks illegal beautiful tempting the words keep flowing out of me looking at this we're gonna bake this for 30 minutes at 350 degrees fahrenheit It's ready. Oh my God, this is beautiful. Also, you guys need to listen to this. It's literally perfect. Like it looks like restaurant quality and it smells even better. It smells like the strongest, cheesiest smell in the world. I think I'm gonna serve it on a metal dish because that's how they serve it at the Cheesecake Factory. Oh, please tell me it's gonna, oh, it's so soft. It is literally, that's exactly the right color of the Cheesecake Factory one. It sounds like soft and like light, but it's super cheesy at the same time. Like this Loki looks like the Cheesecake Factory one, just plated very messy. Like more like this kind of portion. I hope you guys can see on camera, look at the cheesiness of this. I'm gonna get a bit of, with breadcrumbs to put on top. In my opinion, this is the Cheesecake Factory mac and cheese. I mean, it literally just is. I really hope you guys can see all that cheesiness, the toasty bits, the cheesy bits. If this was really the Cheesecake Factory, I would just eat it straight from the tray because that's the real portion they would serve me. I can judge mac and cheese from the sound of it and the sound of it, it passes the vibe check. It sticks together because it's so cheesy. Keep in mind that I've made mac and cheese hundreds, maybe thousands of times in my life. Not only tastes like the most professional restaurant quality, but it tastes just like being at the Cheesecake Factory. I don't know how they've done it. I don't even know exactly what was different from all the other recipes, 
But if you try this, you will be at the Cheesecake Factory eating mac and cheese, except it's your kitchen. It's truly mind-blowing. I don't even know what to say. This is insane, but I'm going to jail. I am. I went through you guys' comments on my previous video, and I guess I never realized how popular chicken teriyaki from Panda Express is. It makes sense, it's delicious, but a lot of you guys wanted me to share the leaked recipe for it from that same PDF file. We've talked about it in the previous video, but the base for a lot of these dishes from Panda Express is the now famous basic sauce, which is soy sauce, sugar, salt, xanthan gum, MSG, black pepper and ginger, corn syrup and water. We're gonna put the lid on it and we're going to shake it. You can mix the xanthan gum with the water first like we did last time and even heat it up if you don't want any lumps. But last time I had no issues with the mixture so I'm just mixing everything just because it's easier. When you're done, this is the sauce for the teriyaki chicken. So this is kind of the marinade for the teriyaki chicken, but also this doubles as a sauce. You will, you will see what I mean. We start with sugar, water, we're gonna combine this. To this we're adding two teaspoons of garlic and ginger in oil. Also some lemon juice, sesame oil, and of course, this is why we started with the basic sauce. I hope I have enough. I think I'll have just about enough of this. So you wanna add the basic sauce that we prepared. Wow, immediately it smells, it smells really good. If I had to describe my favorite food smell in the world, it would be this mixture. At Panda Express, they almost exclusively use chicken thighs. We're gonna add the chicken thighs and they're just chicken thigh fillets. So they have no bones or anything. It's so much liquid for this amount of chicken, but I think this is exactly what's going to give it a lot of flavor. It's really going to soak in because the next step is to cover this and put it in the fridge for a minimum of one hour, but ideally overnight. So we're going to leave it for like a few hours maybe. You want to cover this and make sure that all the flavors are going to like melt. So I'm just going to refrigerate these. Something is happening with the sauce because it's very sticky and sugary. It caramelizes immediately as soon as it touches the pan. My house smells like an Asian restaurant right now and I'm not complaining about any of it. I'm not even complaining about my jumper slowly turning brown. It's so sticky, the sauce is caramelizing. Do you see that? It smells so, so nice. So it's supposed to cook for four to five minutes on each side. So once we've done four minutes on this side, I'm gonna do five minutes on the other. Oh. Okay. This one's got such a nice color. This one is the best one so far. These on the back have the best color. Like how good does that look? I'm gonna make sure it's all nice and sticky. This looks insane. I actually can't believe that I was the one who made this. Like that doesn't make sense in my brain. Like, do you guys see the color of it? Like the shininess, it's like restaurant quality. And also, I think it's fully cooked. This one is a bit smaller, so it came out a little bit too toasty. I think this is toastier than it is at Panda Express, but we're going to prepare the sauce because that marinade is going to be transformed into a sauce. This is probably the most interesting part about this recipe. We are going to use the marinade and transform it into a serving sauce for the teriyaki chicken. So the teriyaki sauce is exactly the same as the marinade, like literally the same. So we're gonna transfer this. Oh. Should have done this a little bit more gently because this is a lot of raw chicken, but it'll be fine. Because the chicken marinated in this, you actually want to cook this really, really well until it reaches a really high temperature because you have to kill the bacteria. So we're gonna let this heat up a little bit and then we're gonna thicken this up. So this has finally come to a boil and it smells like the most delicious thing in the world, like garlic and ginger. It smells so, so good. I'm gonna let this boil for a little bit longer just to make sure it kills all bacteria from the chicken. Once you feel like this is cooked down and this is ready, we're going to add some cornstarch. And you wanna add it little by little so that it doesn't become grainy. 
And you really need to use a whisk for this because as you can see, there are lumps in here. Wow, that only took three years of my life. So here we've got our sauce. I mean, you can't really see it because it's quite liquidy. If I had to do this again, I would probably add the cornstarch with just a little bit of liquid in the beginning and sort of cook it a little bit. It was stressful to remove all the lumps. I don't think the teriyaki sauce is supposed to be liquidy. So I kind of stopped when I reached sort of like a, like a gravy. It's crazy to think that you can transform a marinade into like an actual sauce and it is shiny and I'm sure it's gonna be sweet and amazing. But it took a long time to cook, like a long time. So I'm just gonna transfer the sauce into this container. You guys saw how much liquid that was and this is not even one cup. I cannot believe that we actually made teriyaki sauce from scratch. So I'm just gonna pour the whole thing. So we're ready to plate our chicken. So here we go, the finalized teriyaki chicken. I think it looks really good, it's super shiny. What they do at the restaurant is they cut the chicken into slices. So that is exactly what we're gonna do. Praying that it was cooked, and it is. You could only get this at Panda Express, truly. This is literally a plate of chicken teriyaki from Panda Express. It looks very, very similar. If we really wanna be extra, we can get some of that sticky teriyaki sauce that we made and we can just cover the top and I think this makes it look even more, like look at that stickiness. This is a good recipe guys. And it smells so, so good. It always looks so shiny at the restaurant. That's what they do, they apply the sauce after. I'm trying to clean it up, but this sauce is so sticky that I think it's making it worse. Let me know what you think, but I think it does look really similar to the Panda Express teriyaki chicken. Does it taste like the teriyaki chicken from Panda Express? These recipes are going to be the end of me. This is so, so, so good. But also, if you ever wanted to know how they make Panda Express teriyaki chicken, this is it. I don't even know how else to tell you, but I just want you guys to actually try it because if you've tried this, you would know exactly what I mean. This is it, that is the recipe. And also, we're all thinking it, so I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> this is exactly why we need this amount. So, so good. A lot of you guys actually tried the sweet and sour leaked recipe that I've shown you and everyone's been speechless because that's exactly the same as the sweet and sour sauce from McDonald's. So I know that you guys wanna see more of the McDonald's sauces and the exciting thing is this also comes from the same person that leaked the other one. This is the hot mustard sauce from McDonald's, which I would say one of the most popular sauces. The way to make this one is a little bit more interesting. We're gonna start with vinegar, soy sauce. This is mayo. I'm gonna use my tiny little whisk. <laughs> I've always wanted to use it. This is salt and cayenne pepper. This is ground mustard or dry mustard. This is dark corn syrup, which I didn't even know was a thing. And this is yellow mustard, which is the main ingredient, which was kind of expected. So I'm gonna put all the yellow mustard in. I gotta make sure I get every drop because like those things make a difference whether this is gonna be like the real deal or not. Not the most appetizing, but maybe once we mix it, this will look very similar to the original one. I think so actually this is similar this person gotta have a job at like the mcdonald's offices or something this is so similar it is very smooth it was really easy to mix it looks a lot more yellow i don't even know what color this is a really weird color the reason why we made this in this container is because we're actually going to microwave this for 30 seconds so that should be interesting maybe i'm gonna put the lid just like sideways 30 seconds on the highest setting of your microwave and then we're gonna mix it again this was almost boiling in 30 seconds which was really strange i don't know if it's the sugar and it's a lot deeper now in color i don't even know if i'm gonna be able to show it to you guys because this is so runny that it doesn't even stick i just looked at an image of the of the hot mustard from mcdonald's and i think the color is pretty spot on the only difference is mine is very runny but we're supposed to put this in the fridge for a minimum of eight hours, which is a long time. So ideally you wanna leave it overnight. I'm hoping this will become stickier. So I just got this out of the fridge and I think the real test is 
Will this stick to a chicken nugget the same way that the original does? Because the color is the same, the graininess and texture of the sauce is the same. We're gonna see the way this coats. <laughs> I mean, I could not be happier with that. That is exactly the way that the original one coats the chicken nugget. That has to be leaked by Ronald McDonald himself. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't even believe myself at this point. You guys really think that I'm bamboozling you. I just hope you try it. That's all I can say at this point. This is... Yeah, if you want to make this sauce at home, that's how you make it. It really is. Spiciness, sweetness, it's perfect. I could have maybe left it for a few more hours in the fridge. It probably wasn't the full amount of time that it needs. And look at the way... It still sticks to the nugget. It's just, that literally looks like a McDonald's advert. That's what the original sauce looks like. This is insane, 500% approved. Just wow. I saw that a lot of people enjoyed the previous copycat recipes video. A lot of people tested the recipes and enjoy them. So that kind of just made me want to do another one for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. It took me so long filming this that I got sick in between. So like my throat is kind of hurting right now. I think I'm just tired. I think I just need to go to sleep. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it and subscribe only if you enjoy my videos. If you have a good time, go ahead and tap the notification bell. I would, it would mean a lot to me. Before I lose my voice, I'm going to go. I love you guys and I will see you on my next video. Bye bye.